Welcome to the Deadwood. I'm Willow the Wendigo. I make my home here. Today I'm going to explore the drug Ivermectin, including how it works, what it's used for, and why it is not currently used as a treatment for COVID-19. Multiple public health agencies recommend against using Ivermectin as a treatment for COVID-19. Despite these warnings, many people are misusing the drug, which is both dangerous and unwise. I felt educating myself and others about how this drug works would be beneficial to help dispel nonsense about the drug and encourage people to get proper treatment should they contract COVID. So don't be shy, grab a beverage or a bite to eat, and let's have a chat. Given the amount of misinformation about ivermectin, I feel it's best to begin with a description of the drug and how it works. So, what is it? Ivermectin is an anthelmintic and insecticide. It is derived from the microorganism Streptomyces avermectinius, which was discovered in 1973 by the combined efforts of the Kitasato Institute in Japan and the Merck, Sharp, and Dami Research Laboratories. In 1975, scientists learned that S. avermectinius produces eight natural ivermectins, one of which, avermectin B1a, is used to create ivermectin. Ivermectin works by affecting transport across cell membranes. There are selectively permeable openings in cell membranes that allow movement between the inside and outside of the cell. Some of these are ion channels, which can be further classified into subcategories, which are succinctly explained in this video from Alila Medical Media. There is a link to the full video on the screen and in the description. Ion channels permit passive transport of ions. These are transmembrane proteins that form pores for ions to pass through. Most ion channels are specific for a certain type of ion. Ion channels can be classified by how they change their open, closed state in response to different factors of the environment. Common types of ion channels include Leak channels. These channels are almost always open, allowing more or less steady flow of ions. Examples are potassium and sodium leak channels in neurons. Ligand-gated ion channels. These channels open upon binding of a ligand. They are most commonly found at synapses, where neurons communicate via chemical messages, or neurotransmitters. An example is the GABA receptor, a chloride channel located on postsynaptic neurons. It opens upon binding to GABA, a neurotransmitter released by the presynaptic neuron, and allows chloride ions to flow into the cell. Voltage-gated ion channels. These channels are regulated by membrane voltage. They open at some values of the membrane potential and close at others. These are the channels that underlie action potentials in neurons and cardiac muscles. Ivermectin is a positive allosteric modulator. It works by forcing open chloride ion channels, which are a type of ligand-gated channel the second type the Alila video described. Ivermectin selectively binds to and increases the time these channels remain open each time they are used. These gates are commonly found in the cell membranes of insects, crustaceans, and worms called nematodes. By affecting various muscle and nerve cells requiring these channels to function, ivermectin effectively paralyzes body parts. The affected systems can range from female reproductive tracts, to excretory systems, to secretory systems that release immunosuppressants to keep the parasite alive in a host body, and others. The result is death for the affected invertebrate, even though it may be a parasite inside of a human's body. Mammals only have this type of chloride channel in their brain and spinal cord. Since avermectins rarely cross the blood-brain barrier, which protects the brain, the drug is safe for human use at the levels required to handle parasitic infestations. However, overdoses can change this, overcoming the blood-brain barrier and affecting the central nervous system. 
The United States Centers for Disease Control put out a statement on August 21st, 2021, that lists side effects of abusing ivermectin and suffering from an overdose. I'll read what they say verbatim. Clinical effects of ivermectin overdose include gastrointestinal symptoms such as nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. Overdoses are associated with hypotension and neurologic effects such as decreased consciousness, confusion, hallucinations, seizures, coma, and death. Ivermectin may potentiate the effects of other drugs that cause central nervous system depression such as benzodiazepines and barbiturates. Examples of recent significant adverse effects reported to the U.S. Poison Control Centers include the following. An adult drank an injectable ivermectin formulation intended for use on cattle in an attempt to prevent COVID-19 infection. This patient presented to a hospital with confusion, drowsiness, visual hallucinations, tachypnea, and tremors. The patient recovered after being hospitalized for nine days. An adult patient presented with altered mental status after taking ivermectin tablets of unknown strength purchased on the internet. The patient reportedly took five tablets a day for five days to treat COVID-19. The patient was disoriented and had difficulty answering questions and following commands. Symptoms improved with discontinuation of ivermectin after hospital admission. Obviously, ivermectin is not something to be trifled with. All drugs have risk, but when used as directed and within safe dosages, ivermectin is a well-tolerated drug that is not dangerous for the vast majority of people. It is sometimes described as a wonder drug because of its ability to treat a multitude of diseases and parasitic infections at low cost, particularly in impoverished parts of the world. Some of the diseases it has a very high success rate treating are river blindness, lymphatic filariasis, strongylides, nethostomiasis, common and crusted scabies, head lice, and mansonellosis, all of which are the result of parasitic infections. Though studies are inconclusive and still ongoing, the drug also shows potential for treatment of malaria, bed bugs, snail fever, and leukemia. It is also prescribed off-label as an antiviral agent against certain viruses. I should note, however, that some of these previous four diseases, such as malaria, would be treated indirectly by ivermectin. For instance, rather than assuaging the symptoms of malaria itself, ivermectin kills the mosquitoes that carry the disease and the single-celled parasites that cause it when at a high enough concentration. At this point, it should be clear why some consider this a wonder drug, given hundreds of millions of people are affected by the various conditions this drug treats. So how did an insecticide become a supposed COVID cure? Over the past 17 months, claims that ivermectin cures COVID-19 have become increasingly common. This has resulted in a rash of overdoses in the United States due to abuse of the drug. In the state of Mississippi, the issue has become so bad the Department of Health issued an official statement about it on August 20th. The document specifically points out that 70% of recent calls to the state's poison control center were related to ingestion of ivermectin intended for animal use. Part of the pervasive misinformation about ivermectin is due to ignorance, but part of it is due to negligence on the part of news organizations and those in the public eye. Too many of them fail to do research before pushing claims about things they don't understand. For instance, here's Alex Jones appearing to have a psychotic episode while taking ivermectin live on air. You know what this is? This is ivermectin for humans who won a Nobel Prize as an antiviral. And this is inhalable, or these are the tablets, steroids.
So let me show you. I was going to do this anyways earlier. See this? See this, Fauci? You see this, Bill Gates? I'm going to kill those prions, you bastard murderers. You're going to hit me with a bioweapon, you monster. You want to suppress me? You want to kill me, you son of a bitch? You goddamn demon? You think I'm easy to kill? Think I'm going to roll over to your crap? No. Nobel Prize winning for humans. 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 What, 2005? Nobel Prize winning for humans. And here's Joe Rogan describing a pharmaceutical cocktail that he took when he contracted COVID. And of course, the regimen included ivermectin. So I got up in the morning, got tested, and it turns out I got COVID. So we immediately threw the kitchen sink at it. All kinds of meds, monoclonal antibodies, uh, ivermectin, z uh prednisone, everything. Uh, and I also got an NAD drip and a vitamin drip, and I did that three days in a row. Keep in mind that the greatest drug in the world, taken to nullify the wrong symptoms, will be ineffective. If you take penicillin to cure cancer, or Benadryl to stop a gangrenous infection, they will have no effect. A drug's efficacy does not matter if it is being taken as a treatment for something it does not affect. So where did this claim that ivermectin cures COVID-19 start? I searched back about 24 months from the publishing date of this video, and I believe I found the source. It appears to stem from a study by Kaylee et al., first published on March 29th, 2020. The study found that ivermectin was effective at destroying the RNA of SARS-CoV-2 in deliberately infected tissue samples in vitro, aka samples in the lab outside of the body. The study authors make it clear in their four-page paper, linked in the video description below, that ivermectin intended for animal use is not safe for human use, and that the drug needs more research before being used as a treatment for COVID-19. Yet the media, always grasping for ad revenue, viewership, and clicks, jumped on the study immediately and blew its findings far out of proportion. The study was available online on April 3rd. The earliest article I found about it was published the next day, and the sensationalist headlines were in full force from the get-go, and continued from there. What is ivermectin, the wonder drug that has found to wipe out coronavirus in 48 hours? Antiparasitic drug ivermectin kills coronavirus in 48 hours. What do drugs for lice, HIV, and Ebola share? They could treat coronavirus, experts say. Cure hope! Antiparasitic drug could kill off coronavirus in just two days, scientists discover. Buried in most of these articles, sometimes in the last paragraph or two, is an admission that the study's authors don't want their paper taken as proof that ivermectin is a cure for COVID-19. And many of the articles remind readers that ivermectin is a potential treatment for the disease. But the headline is what most people pay attention to. And let's be real here, how many people are actually going to look up the study and read it for themselves? Even worse, some of these articles are written by people with such unfathomable ignorance of the subject matter that they spew absolutely stunning inanity. The paragon of ignorance in this case is an article on weeklyblitz.net, published only four days after the study became available online. Its glorious headline reads, Australian scientists find drug that completely stops coronavirus from replicating. Now, this isn't entirely untrue, but the dosages required to kill SARS-CoV-2 were much higher than the normal antiparasitic dose used in humans. As stated before, the experiments also took place in vitro rather than in clinical trials, so the headline is definitely misleading. Then you have this gem of a quote. Although the researchers are not yet sure how exactly ivermectin can kill coronavirus, they believe that the drug paralyzes the virus and, quote, overwhelms its nervous system, end quote, which then impedes its replication process. 
There are two points worth noting here. First, viruses are microscopic organisms that infect individual cells. They do not even have nervous systems. Anyone that understands what a virus is should know this. I have minimal knowledge of biology, and even I understand that viruses which invade individual cells are too small to have nervous systems made up of hundreds of billions of cells. Second, it's blatantly obvious that whoever on the Blitz editorial team wrote this didn't actually read the study. The words nervous system don't even show up in the study. Instead, they show up twice in the Daily Mail article the Blitz article references. First, there's a quote, Blitz is dangerously close to plagiarizing that has no scientific basis. It's believed the drug works by paralyzing the SARS-CoV-2 virus and, quote, overwhelming its nervous system, end quote, preventing it from replicating. Then there's this one talking about how ivermectin affects parasites, not viruses. Dr. Michael Head, a research fellow at University of Southampton, with a specialty in scabies and other diseases, said ivermectin is one of the best treatments for scabies. It works by paralyzing the parasite and, quote, overwhelming, end quote, its nervous system. It's easy to see how this type of telephone game stupidity results in misunderstood science. Pundits present out-of-context information with attention-grabbing headlines based on scientific research they either haven't read or don't understand, and often quoted from pundits who have only quoted each other. Then the masses hear only parts of this drivel, sometimes only reading the sensationalist headlines, and believe they've been presented with the news. The result is sometimes as nonsensical and dangerous as mass ingestion of cattle dewormer by ignorant people. Clinical studies are still being done to determine the efficacy of treating COVID-19 with ivermectin. At least three were claimed to have been done in the recent past, but were later retracted or withdrawn due to a variety of concerns ranging from ethical issues to plagiarism to a lack of transparency with their data. Furthermore, there are of course various studies of ivermectin's effectiveness in preprints and protocol repositories, but these have not yet been peer-reviewed, which is vital to ensuring the quality and trueness of their findings. The results of such studies have not yet been verified. Unfortunately, this has not stopped their information from being spread far and wide via the internet and social media, resulting in a wealth of disinformation that has even impacted clinicians and policymakers. So, does ivermectin cure COVID-19? These days, people want quick, compact answers. Unfortunately, answers aren't always so simple. Does life evolve over time? Yes. Is the earth flat? No! Does ivermectin cure COVID-19? I'm not sure. Multiple health agencies worldwide, including the United States Food and Drug Administration, the European Medicines Society, Health Canada, and the World Health Organization, have all released statements advising not to use ivermectin as a treatment for COVID-19. It is especially critical not to use ivermectin meant for cattle on humans because of possibly fatal overdose risks. Yes, there is potential that the drug or a derivative of it could help contain SARS-CoV-2 in the future. But for now, we simply don't have enough information to ensure that it is safe to treat COVID-19 with ivermectin when an extremely high dose was required to kill the virus in the lab. Instead, we have multiple vaccines that have been shown to work extraordinarily well. Yet, for some reason, many people are more willing to overdose on antiparasitic medication prescribed for cattle than use a vaccine specifically created to combat a life-threatening worldwide disease endemic in humans. But that's for another video. The bottom line is this. Ivermectin is an amazing drug. It saved and improved hundreds of millions of lives, 
it's safe for human use when taken as designed, and it shows potential for further uses beyond parasite control. But right now, it should not be used as a treatment option for COVID-19. Instead, proven prevention methods like mask wearing, social distancing, and taking one of the available vaccines are much better options. This pandemic is not a conspiracy or a genocidal effort by some secretive cabal. It's a modern black death. But if we stop listening to secondhand opinions and listen to the researchers themselves, we can defeat it and return to the lives we had before. That's all for now. I'm Willow the Wendigo, bidding you farewell. Wherever you are, I hope you have a lovely night's sleep. And remember, you're always welcome in the Deadwood.